Hey, Kevin. What are you doing? Figuring. I was going to recreate this. Full size. What's full size? About 10 feet tall. So I got to sit here and figure, okay, if it's this big by this big by this big, how big do I need it in order to be able to hold everything up? One of the questions I get asked a lot is, how do I know what size metal to use for what project, for what piece, for what, what portion of a, of a sculpture? You know, do I use some, you know, do I use some eight inch plate or do I use some 16, you know, 20 gauge or, you know, real, real light, real, real bendy. Yeah. You know, 16 gauge, uh, you know, inch thick plate. I mean, you know, what goes on up here to make me say, go get that gauge metal, go get that thickness. So to recreate this guy, this is called the runner. Uh, this is a maquette that I had for, that I created for a proposal for a public sculpture in one of the cities right here in the valley. And I actually submitted two different maquettes, and they chose the other one. So this one has just been sitting in the office and just kind of waiting. It's kind of been bugging me. And I finally decided, screw it, I'm going to build it. I'm going to make it full size and nothing else. I'll take it home and put it in the front yard. But what am I going to use for metal for thickness? You know, that, that's the first question I have to ask myself. How big are all the pieces going to become? to make it proportional, you know, and make it still stand upright, make it still look like it's balancing kind of precariously, but it really isn't. So I think with this one, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use varying thicknesses, your varying gauges, starting at the bottom, the, on the base, you know, the bottom of the base, that part. I'm thinking, I'm probably going to get a piece of half-inch plate to use for the base. And then I'll get quarter inch. This is three eighths, but that, that gives you an idea how thick it is. You know, it's just a little bit thinner than that. Uh, this is a piece of this is a piece of five eighths. So just a little bit over what I want to use on the base itself. But I want this big heavy chunk down on the bottom to give it a good solid footprint. Then I'm going to come in with some quarter inch and make my sides like I'm here. And then a piece of quarter inch across the top of it. Add some ribbing inside there because there's going to be not a tremendous amount of weight, but there's going to be a lot of torque. There's going to be a lot of leverage up there from this piece working its way all the way down. So I want to add some ribs inside this base. So when I weld the top on, I'll drill holes in the top that line up with those ribs so I can weld the top to the ribs inside. So everything's all tied together, nothing's gonna move. And then the next piece up, and I'll just make the whole thing out of eighth inch. Probably use eighth inch for the next one. Get those all welded together. Then I'll go to 16 gauge. Now, see, the mine's going. <laughs> where, where, this, where this block is going to tie into the 8 inch block that's underneath it, I'll use 8 inch at the tie-in points. The points that don't have anything tied to them, I'll use 16 gauge. And then 16 gauge at the top. This one all out of 16 gauge. And then Probably the tie-ins, the base, 16 gauge, the top, probably go up to 18 or 20 gauge. Now remember, when, you get, when you're talking gauges, the higher the number, the thinner the metal. So it, it's getting thinner. It's getting thinner, thinner, thinner as it gets to the top. That helps cut down on the weight. Because not only do you have to be able to move it, but you've got to be able to hoist these pieces up there and put them in place, hold them in place, weld them, get them all structurally sound all at the same time. 
So there'll probably be some ribbing inside of these, you know, to help stiffen them up a little. I don't want to have just a hollow cavity right there because there's just too much warpage, there's too much flex, you know. This is going to have to be strong structurally. Try to keep it light, but it'll have to be strong, have to be able to hold itself up. So, you know, any kind of wind, you know, if somebody decides to climb it and sit up on top of it, you know, I don't want it to break and fall apart, so. What about if you're rolling metal, like in a slip roll? Now, this is a piece of 16 gauge, so it's about a, I think it's about a third thicker than the 20 gauge is. So a little stiffer, but what happens when you roll that piece of metal, you know, like this was in the slip roll, what happens is you work harden it a little, you know, you, you temper it a little, just from the, from the flex of going through there, it gets a little stiffer. It's stiffer on its own because of that curve. It's like an egg. You know, the, the oval of an egg is structurally very, very strong because of the curves themselves. So if I wanted to create this sculpture but have all of the surfaces bowed just slightly, now I could go with a much thinner metal because structurally they're stronger because of the arch. Of, of the bow and the metal itself. They wouldn't look quite right. You know, they'd all look like they were little ovals sitting there, or little pillows or something. You know, I wanted them to look more like building blocks. You'll see the sculpture as it comes together. I'll be working on this all summer long. So check the website, you know, sign up for the newsletter. You'll get little notices as things develop, as it starts to grow. Uh, it ought to be pretty spectacular when I get it done and wheel it outside for the first time. We'll see you later.